Hey, this is Dr. Laura Conover, and today I'm making a video on nine healthy habits you can get into that boost longevity. Like I said in my last video on anti-aging, aging seems to be a balance between inflammation that accrues in our body and resulting in organ damage over time. Um, our organ systems function less efficiently and they get fibrotic, and that's what aging is, is, is this progression and this accumulation of inflammation-driven damage to different tissues in our body, but that is counterbalanced by our ability to self-heal and regenerate, which is driven by stem cells. So stem cell regeneration on the one hand makes us a self-healing machine. When we have damaged and diseased cells, our body can replace them with healthy healing cells and that's how we live most of our life. As inflammation accrues and the health of our organ systems decline, and we run out of stem cells and so we're no longer making new fresh cells to replace old ones, that's when your organ systems are sort of on their last use because they're not going to be refreshed and replaced anymore. And that's when if someone lives long enough, you can see them go into frailty because their organ systems are on their last use and so muscle mass decreases because the muscles are not going to be regenerated, bone density decreases, brain volume decreases, and so you know skin um, thickness decreases. Nothing is going to be refreshed anymore. So it's on its sort of last lap. So two ways that you can boost your own longevity and approach anti-aging is to keep inflammation down so you have less inflammation accruing, which gives you a longer lifespan theoretically, and also to be protective of your stem cell regeneration and boost and create um, conditions that boost your body's ability to continue to make fresh stem cells and regenerate your tissues. I'm going to give you lots of holistic healing practices that balance them both out, keeping inflammation down and boosting and protecting the stem cells that you have so that you can boost your regenerative capabilities and hopefully either live longer or at least feel better for the lifespan that you have because your body is more functional and you're healthier. So let's dive straight into them. The first thing you can do is consider what you eat. A lot of our diet is inflammatory and so if you can eat an anti-inflammatory diet you are really keeping inflammation down not just in your gut but throughout your entire body. There are lots of things you can eat that have been studied and shown in the medical literature to be anti-inflammatory and those include antioxidants, polyphenols, and healthy fats, which are polyunsaturated fats. So we're talking about fish, we're talking about seeds and nuts like sunflower seeds, walnuts, flax seeds. Those all have those healthy fats in them. Um, and lots of fresh fruits and vegetables for those polyphenols and for those antioxidants. So as much of those as you can sprinkle in through your diet every day, that would be phenomenal. And just as important maybe almost as important as what you eat is what you choose not to eat. And that's the second tip, is what not to eat. And that's two things that we know are very pro-inflammatory of the body. And so think of them as as you eat them, they might feel like treats, but they're aging you. And that is sugar, it's highly inflammatory, and that is gluten, which is also inflammatory. And in fact, gluten is neuroinflammatory. It causes inflammation in the brain. And some people consider it neurotoxic. It's at least a neuroirritant. So gluten has been shown in the medical literature to age the brain and even be linked with dementia and other neuroinflammatory conditions. And sugar has been shown throughout the entire body to be very inflammatory and very damaging. So if at all possible, decreasing your sugar intake and decreasing your gluten intake will allow your body to be re less reactive and so that will naturally keep inflammation down well hopefully like we just talked about you'll add some anti-inflammatory foods which will even further keep inflammation down so the third thing you can do besides what you eat and what you don't eat is to not eat at all which is fasting that is a practice number three that you can do in the comfort of your own home that we know extends lifespan. We have actually known since the 1930s, that's, there was studies back in the 1930s that showed calorie restriction lengthens lifespan. So I have tons of blog posts showing what I would suggest about fasting. I suggest intermittent fasting. There's a lot of different plans for that. And if you go to my website, intuition-physician.com, on the blog, you just do a search, put in fasting. There will be dozens and dozens of free healing articles where I walk you through what I would recommend, how you fast, either fasting at night and just extending the length of time you fast at night, or fasting two days a week and not even worrying about it the other five days and just eating normally. So there's a way to get into this rhythm where you're, you have intermittent fasting, which is intermittently decreasing the calories you take in. And we know that this is 
anti-inflammatory, encourages stem cell regeneration, and actually translates into increased longevity. So the fourth thing you can do is still related to what we're going to consume. So we talked about what is anti-inflammatory, what you should eat, what is pro-inflammatory, and so what you shouldn't eat, the option of fasting, and then the last way that just easily, passively, you can be anti-inflammatory and protect your stem cell regeneration is through supplements. So there's lots of supplements that have been studied in the medical literature and shown to protect stem cells and also decrease inflammation. Top supplements I would recommend that have legitimate medical studies backing this up are uh, fish oil supplements, so omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin E, probiotics, and zinc. All of those have been shown to boost stem cells or be anti-inflammatory or both. The fifth thing you can do is more of a lifestyle practice. And this, if you want to dive more deeply into why this is so anti-aging, go to the last video I made, which is all about grounding, which is the healing practice of going outside and touching the earth or using indoor grounding tools to get conductively connected to that electrical earth, which runs off of direct current DC energy, which is also what our body runs off of. It's how our heart beats. It's the electrical impulses from our brain. It's how our, the electrical impulses that move our muscles. All of that is DC energy current. And so when we hook our bodies up to the earth outside through directly touching our conductive body to the conductive earth outside or using those indoor grounding tools, there are double blind placebo based studies that are in the medical literature that show we have dramatic health benefits in almost every organ system. The way that grounding is specifically anti-aging, there's actually quite a few, which is why it's a whole nother video, but it protects your muscles and protects you from muscle damage. Your muscles help make stem cells and are responsible. Your muscles and your bone marrow are both responsible for your stem cell regeneration. So we want to, as we age, protect our muscle mass and protect our bones. And so grounding does both. And grounding is also directly anti-inflammatory. So there's lots of studies that show it decreases whole body inflammation, looking at lab results like C-reactive protein, um, thermal imaging showing that it's got decreased inflammation in joints and other areas of the body that's having inflammation. There are studies on the skin and this anti-inflammatory effect actually helping to for skin to heal more quickly. That collagen actually repairs three times faster when you're grounded. Uh, that wounds heal more quickly. So there's a lot of different ways that grounding really helps protect the body. There's also indirect ways that grounding protects the body as we'll talk about next. Grounding boosts uh, restorative sleep and sleep is another way that you can protect your longevity. Um, it decreases cortisol. Grounding directly decreases cortisol. When you're grounding routinely, your cortisol level goes down. And that's another thing we're going to talk about, um, which also has been shown to boost stem cell regeneration. So grounding really hits a lot of different areas of being protective to your body from head to toe. The sixth thing that has been shown in the medical literature to help protect longevity is exercise. And that's because, well, a lot of different reasons. Exercise keeps our metabolism going. It keeps our bones strength uh, protected and it boosts our muscle mass. And like we just talked about with grounding, muscles and bones are what make our stem cell regeneration as we age. I mean, when we're, when we're babies and in our umbilical cord, uh, blood, and in different uh, organ systems, we have lots of stem cells because we're just building our body. But once we're an adult, uh, most of our stem cell regeneration does come from maintaining and increasing muscle mass. And the same with our bone marrow. Our bones make those stem cells as well. So that's where exercise comes in because it protects both of those and that has translated in medical studies to help boost longevity. The seventh thing that has been studied and found to protect stem cell regeneration is sleep. And what they found was two hours of sleep was enough to make a difference. So if you sleep two hours less, your stem cell regeneration capabilities go down. And if you sleep two hours more, your stem cell regeneration goes up. So I hope you're sleeping at least seven hours a night. If you are sleeping under that, you really want to shoot for adding an hour or two to your circadian rhythm. Grounding can help with that. There's lots of other things that can help with that. Again, on my blog, I have tons of articles dedicated to showing you how to get that restorative deep sleep and walking you through lots of different things you can do. So if you go to my website and just in the search bar, put in sleep, you'll get lots of free healing articles helping you increase your restorative sleep. But if you can boost the amount of time you spend sleeping, you will protect and boost your stem cell regeneration, which adds up over a lifetime. 
Number eight, something that you can do on your own at home, and that's decreasing stress. There is lots of different ways you can approach this. Um, again, and not to be a broken record, but on my website, I have lots of healing articles dedicated to decreasing stress at work, decreasing stress at home, and helping lower cortisol levels. That is very important. So when we decrease our stress, we lower our cortisol levels, and lower cortisol levels are associated with boosted stem cell regeneration. So however you can reduce stress in your life, whether it's reducing back noise, whether it's changing jobs, whether it's making your commute easier, whether it's reevaluating your relationships, whether it's supplements that help you be more resilient, whether it's exercising to release stress, whether it's sleeping better that will lower your cortisol level, level whether it's getting into a better day-night rhythm, which will also help regulate your cortisol level. There is a lot of things you can do. Okay, number nine. This is the only one that I would consider probably fringe, but there is still tons of medical research, so I don't consider it fringe at all, and that is to decrease your EMF exposures. We have medical studies showing that EMF exposures increase inflammation, and not just whole body inflammation, but specifically neuroinflammation. So if you want to protect your brain, one of the main reasons our brain ages is because accruing neuroinflammation. That's what causes brain changes as we age. So decreasing neuroinflammation and part of that, I believe, will become more and more aware of and more and more mainstream is decreasing our exposures to EMFs. So I, again, I have tons of resources for decreasing your exposures to EMFs. I even have an online class about protecting your body from EMFs. But if you can just turn your phone on airplane mode at night, if you can just not hold it to your head and make sure you do speakerphone, if you can just turn your router off at night, put it on a timer and just have it go off at night when you're asleep and not going to use it anyway. There's tons of just such easy ways that you can lower your exposures and just even lowering your exposures by a degree or two makes a difference. It protects your body because EMF exposures are all about our total toxic body burden. So even if you only just make one tiny, tiny change, that decreases the burden on your body. And again, as we talked about the whole time, when we decrease inflammation on the body, we really protect our longevity. So again, decreasing inflammation and boosting stem cell regeneration is how we stay healthier and younger for longer. I hope this video was really, really helpful, and you can find tons of other resources on my website at intuition-physician.com.